when I was preparing for my MCH exams, I was thinking that when I make this video, I will be like, woohoo, yay, I'm a plastic surgeon. But the real emotion that I'm feeling now or what I felt when the results came was, wow, I'm a plastic surgeon. Is it a dream or something? What has changed? I am still the same chisel who went to Manipal in 2008 with a dream to become a good doctor. I am still as youthful, I am still as energetic, in fact more energetic now. But now I have gone through the process, I have lived it, I have loved it and I have absorbed every moment of it. And during that process I have done so much reading that I have now attached three medical degrees to my name. MBBS, MS and MCH. So I guess this is the right time to take a look at the journey so far, the ups and downs and to assess the current situation that what comes next after this. Because with great degrees come greater responsibilities. Let's talk about it. So I was among the toppers in my 10th standard. I had got more than 90% marks. Uh, but after that, I was told that you need to stop going to school. Instead, you need to go to coaching classes and give a proxy attendance in school. It was a little weird. I don't know how my mind processed it. I went to the coaching classes. I could not really connect to the environment. I started enjoying a little more because it was that age. From being a topper in 10th, I became someone who barely passed my 12th standard exams. And nobody really said anything because it was said that 12th standard marks are not important. All you need to do is crack a medical seat. I failed to do that as well. Life came to a pause. It was a horrible time. Family went into panic. Someone said send him to Russia. Someone said send him to China. All sorts of advice was coming in and it was decided eventually that I should go to Kota because now in a couple of years, I was not good enough to match the level of competition. So I went to Kota because that is where students can concentrate and study well. That was a horrible time. I was 17 years old, totally clueless. I literally gave up everything. I stopped socializing. I stopped partying. I followed a strict schedule and for one year, I did everything that I could with just one focus in mind that come out of this place with an MBBS seat. I did not even have chicken for a whole year because it was not easily available in Kota. I went to a festival at home. My mother cooked chicken. I puked after having it. Horrible memory it is. I was a changed man after that. I could feel it. That a part of me has died. I gave my PMT exam. After so much effort, I managed to come into the waiting list. But thankfully, I cracked the Manipal uh, entrance exam and my parents said that I have worked hard for it, so I deserve to go. My parents sat down to discuss the finances, had to take a study loan to do my MBBS, a loan which took me at least four years after MBBS to repay completely. But going to Manipal with all the problems was the best decision of my life. It is a beautiful place, a place that can change your life. What an institute. I don't have words to describe it. The best medical college in the country, at least at that time, current status, I don't know. The best decision of my life was to go to Manipal. So I followed the path that I thought was right. I did my internship properly. But when I came out after passing MBBS, there was no place for an MBBS doctor in the medical industry. Just MBBS, people used to ask. So obviously you had to do a PG. And for PG, now people start preparing from second year MBBS itself, such is the level of competition. I had to sit down for another year at home, go again through the process of rectifying everything, doing the MCQs, trying to pass a competitive exam, quota memories coming back again. And after becoming a doctor, it's difficult to sit at home. Most of your counterparts from the non-medical field start getting their salaries and you start feeling that you should get going soon. But you sit down for another year sometimes two years or three years trying to crack neat PG exam. Part of me died again in that year. I used to cry in the car parking before I uh, came home because it was too much to handle and I didn't want my parents to see me crying. And I became so heartless, I used to shout at my mom if my breakfast got delayed by five minutes. If the housemate took five minutes extra to clean up my room, I used to get so irritated. I was really stressed. It was a mess. But after another year of struggle, I gave neat PG exam and I got rank 2532. And it was a relief because I got a government college and I got MS in general surgery. I needed a government college because I didn't have any money to pay the fees of a private medical college again. And I had to repay my loan. So for the next three years, I went to Rohtak to do my MS in general surgery. And all my stipend, the 70% of my stipend went into the loan installments. And I managed with the rest of the 30%. Rohtak was wonderful. I learned a lot personally as well as professionally. I came out a gold medalist from Rohtak, but with zero savings. 
and it was time to get married my wife who was my mbbs batchmate and a good friend from mbbs we decided that it was time to tie the knot so we moved to chandigarh started merry life and i started working as a senior resident in general surgery then again when i started working i worked for a year and a half i realized through that time that things are not as good as they look from outside i felt there is a race going on and even a postgraduate degree is not enough why is an ms general surgery senior resident feeling that he is not good enough why is there a sense of under achievement still why is the system not ready to pay us decent salaries to support our families even now people were telling me that you should do fellowships you should do mch you should train further in various sub specialities in general surgery only then you will be able to survive further i was like i have studied for 10 years now after 12th standard why is there no respect for the skill that i have acquired so far why am i not getting enough salary to support my family something is wrong and after a year of this dilemma and after assessing the situation myself i realized that i had to get ahead of this chaos so i decided to pursue a super specialty degree as well and it was a big decision i was married i had to look after the family as well now and super specialty also requires a competitive exam to be cleared and i needed to take a brave step i discussed with my family that i wish to study further they also i guess felt it is a little risky but they were all supportive and i took the decision to resign from my job because the amount of study that i needed was not possible with the amount of work expected from me so i had to resign i resigned in january 2020 expecting to clear the exam which was supposed to happen in a span of 3 to 4 months but then came covid and all hell broke loose all my plans fell apart everything was just going bad sukriti had promised to give me a financial cover for 3 to 4 months that financial cover got extended to up to a year because of covid some things are meant to be and this youtube channel started because covid happened because i had cleared my exams well because i studied well so i could focus on my youtube channel a little bit and it is a good start up i think And yeah I cleared my NEET super specialty exam and got into plastic surgery at one of the top institutes for plastic surgery that is Safdarjung Hospital. There was another incident that had a huge impact on me. I cleared a written exam for one of the top most institutes in our country and I went for the interview. I couldn't clear it twice. I don't want to give excuses. I was not good enough for it. What I felt was I was judged to have inadequate knowledge of plastic surgery to enter into a program which is supposed to teach you plastic surgery i was like what kind of system have we developed i was really eager to learn i was very eager to study i was very eager to read and get trained but i was rejected twice because i was not competent enough in plastic surgery to learn plastic surgery that still doesn't make sense to me but i guess destiny has its own path for everyone i got into a very good institute i learned a lot i read a lot i worked a lot and it was wonderful 3 years flew by and today i am a plastic surgeon i have acquired the basic skills that a plastic surgeon has i have the adequate knowledge for working as a plastic surgeon i have 3 years experience of plastic surgery and i have a super specialty degree now but what next can you imagine what the world and teachers are telling me now everybody is saying you need to study further can you believe that dude i am 34 years old i have a wife i have parents who are getting old i hardly have any savings i have started to lose my hair my mental peace has gone for a toss and i need to study further that's the problem with doctors we are just not satisfied we just don't stop read 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 all life but there has to be a stop somewhere even i didn't realize i have been running since 15 years to get all these degrees yes uh, our degrees involve treating patients as well simultaneously so it's kind of a work but the academic pressure it brings along is too much to handle actually but anyways we decided to come into this field it was our choice so we have to do what we have to do uh, what can i do now there are many options one as i discussed study further train further keep going keep training those who finish this mch or dm level at an earlier age that is around 30s they can afford to do a fellowship and study further i am now 34 more than half of my life has gone into studying the rest of my healthy life that i am going to live i want to use all this knowledge to give it back to the people to the patients and society currently i am in a state that i don't want to just keep accumulating knowledge without giving it back that is the 
ideology that I have right now. Now there are many pathways that I can take now. For working, I can join a corporate hospital. I can start a private practice. I can join a private or a government medical college, and I can do freelancing. Freelancing is like you associate yourself with various hospitals, and wherever the patients come, you are called as and when required. So you need a lot of networking for that. So what I wanted to do was to join a medical college, either a private medical college or a government medical college. Private medical colleges are few. They do not really have super specialties everywhere, and they don't really provide you any stability as such because it is a risky affair. I was thinking of joining a government medical college where I can treat a large chunk of population who really need the healthcare services. I can uh, teach the students and I can do some research as well. But here's the catch: for such institutes, I am eligible for one out of. Four advertised seats because the three other seats are reserved categories. Being at this stage, fighting reservation frustrates the hell out of you. And even if I qualify for that one seat out of the four, I am being paid a salary which is less than what I used to get during my MCH. What kind of bullshit is this? With this scenario, how do you not expect me to go into the corporate setup, work for the targets set by those corporate hospitals, work my ass off to perform surgery so that the hospitals can earn and I can earn, so that I have a Mercedes as soon as possible, I have a big house as soon as possible, I have a luxurious life, and I give it to my parents that they deserve. Why would I not do that? I am desperate to work in the government setup. I am desperate to teach the medical students. I am desperate to do research. But I expect a basic salary to support my family. I expect basic facilities so that I can excel in my work. I wasn't planning to make this video like a rant video, but this is the reality. It has to pay you back. You can't just keep struggling all your life. That is the feeling that has started to creep in. Out of all the options that I have discussed, the private medical colleges, the corporate hospitals, government medical colleges, freelancing, studying further, all these things, I am currently uh, figuring out what is best for me and my family. I'll be taking a decision accordingly. But yes, these are the options we have. Broadly, now whether the system allows me to flourish and progress, and whether it allows me to give it back to my country and, and work the way I want to work, only time will tell. This is my first step into the real world of Indian medical practice. I hope I do well. My name is Chizil. You are watching the Tech Doctor. Namaste.